Hello, my name is Ekaterina Smirnova, and today I am welcoming you to my studio again. This is a second day. Yesterday I was showing my works, and I was um, also demonstrating how do I start a painting. And today on the schedule there are a few things that I need to continue working on my painting I started yesterday, and also I do some adjustments to previous paintings as well. And I will also show you how to mix uh, your own watercolor paints as well. So let me um, welcome you and one more time show you around my studio. And my studio is located in East Harlem. And it's a very old building that this is my floor. And I can show you it's quite large. It's really a dream studio. And um, I've been here for... Um, a year and a half, and I really enjoyed working in here. So, this painting I started yesterday, and it was just a blank paper, and it's quite large. You can see from the ceiling to the floor. So, there are a few things that you, you see here. That this is the actual paper on which I'm painting, and this brown paper is masking. I block out the area that I'm, uh, I don't want to mess up. I, I want to keep it clean. So this, this is how I connect. This is just a regular scraps of paper and I use always an artist tape. Artist tape does not have any acid and that means that it's not gonna distort and damage your painting later on. So, well, um, what I need to do is to, Flash the area. This is a painting of a comet. Comet is called 67P. Uh, you can study about it on my website, yukaterina smirnova.com. And um, in a more detailed, my first step for today is to mix in a, a paint, paint so I can actually use it. And yesterday I was using just from the tubes. Let me um, arrange it this way so you can see. Maybe again closer okay great this is a good view so I very often use uh, Winsor & Newton uh, watercolor paints and you know I prefer getting large tubes because I run out of it with such sizes very quickly and um, but often I mix my own watercolor and let me uh, show that there are a few things here on the table and we will be using them. So we'll start with mixing gum arabic. This is the base for uh, the paint. And uh, a few things that I also add. You can add glycerin into your watercolor paint. Glycerin allows, um, uh, stretches out the time uh, during which you can paint. Because, you know, especially in the winter when the heating is on, uh, the watercolor dries so quickly, the paper just turns dry very fast. So glycerin is meant to extend that, that moment. So it gives you more time to work on the painting. And uh, I add, add a little bit of gelate. And there are a few dry pigments. Um, in this case, I'm using uh, Gamblin, it's a um, well-known brand. Well, safety is first, of course, and I'm gonna uh, put uh, some protective things like goggles. A mask. You don't want to inhale the pigment because this is the only really uh, not good material in watercolor. So better to always use a mask. With this, I'm going to look like a scientist. And of course, gloves. Yeah, the problem with the uh, mask and the glasses is that they get foggy when you're breathing. So anyway, let's go back to our table. Okay, here. So first I would add uh, gamma arabic. You know, I don't um, measure exactly 
my my materials because I sort of already know how much uh, of what do I need. I'll add just a little bit of glycerin, you know, just like that, a drop. Angelate. I'll start with uh, ivory black pigment. You know, the, the beauty um, of working with your own mixed watercolors and paints in general is that you can control the, the way that they would appear. Like if you want to have it more uh, uh, colorful or you want to make it, you know, more opaque or matte, you can do that. Uh, when you're mixing watercolor paints, it, it is also recommended to use um, honey, but uh, I don't have honey here in the studio. And honey is really necessary when you when you want to make uh, 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 paints more like a glossy. And also, when you paint dries, it is easier for you to uh, dilute it again. So uh, you could also use some honey as well. You can find the ingredients for watercolor. Um, you know, in on the website, on, on online, and actually I have a very nice video demonstrating how to mix the watercolor paints yourself. And I'll add, add li a little bit of water. This is a special water that I've been uh, generating. It has an increased level of the D2O, and this is also very relevant to the subject of my paint, paint uh, the um, project that I'm working on, 67P. You can also read it on the blog. And, you know, here I'm, you can see I'm just mixing it simply. I feel like, you know, by the consistency, it is quite, it has a lot of uh, gum arabic, which will also make it glossy. So I need to add more water and more pigment. Even more. By mixing together ultramarine color and uh, ivory black, I'm creating uh, paints gray color. And so paints gray is more like a, a black, um, a bluish tone. You know, in order to make uh, your color solid and, and do not see any particles of dry pigment, you really need to work it. You need, really need to mix it very well. Also, what you could do is to add this liquidy paint into your empty container. And then shake it. The, um, the paint that I need um, actually has to be quite liquid because I'm going to be splashing it on the paper. So uh, this, is, this is, could be a, a good test. Let me see. So here is some paper. And, okay. Yeah, you know, I actually, you, you don't really see uh, the color tone. Uh, this is a not, not a good quality video, but I like the way that it, it appears.
you know, and uh, uh, stir or slightly shake. You don't want to make it's a vigorous shape because it's going to turn into this bubbly liquid. Uh, so you cannot use it straight away. But while this is uh, settling down, I'm going to use this. Maybe add a little more water. So now I don't need a mask anymore and the glasses. Okay. I hope you can see it. No, I'm, I will be splashing on this artwork. Let me see. Just trying to make the video a bit lighter. Okay, very good. Like this. The reason why I'm using a splashing te technique is because I'm working with a vapor of the comet. When the ice is uh, melting, when the comet gets closer to the sun, then the ice turns instantly into gas, which is vapor, which is also forming the comet's tail. And so uh, since vapor is little particles of water, I think splashing is making it uh, a perfect technique on painting uh, a tail of a comet. This painting I have splashed already a few times, uh, about maybe eight times, and so this is going to be my ninth time. To get very high, the painting is quite large, so. and uh, shake it up a little bit, and just like that. I really like the way that the gum arabic smells, the one that I mix, mix in. Um, you know, some, some watercolors smell very well because at times they use a different kind of oil. For example, a clove oil is a very standard oil to add. And uh, you could also add, if you have a clove oil, uh, very commonly used also in mixing oil paintings, oil paints. So again, so I added some, of my liquid uh, color that I mixed and adding more water. Mixing in very well. So continue splashing. Okay, so this is another layer, and again, you should remember that when watercolor dries, 
turns uh, lighter color. So if I need to make it a very dark color, then I would need to splashing, splash about, I don't know, 40 times this way. It is a long process and uh, takes quite some time to finish one painting. But the way that it looks at the end, it totally worth uh, your time. I'm gonna show you closer. See all of these drips, and you can see uh, uh, some part of, of it is here. As you can see here is more dry, and whatever is glossy is just reflecting water uh, on the painting. So all of it has to dry. Sometimes, uh, in order to speed up the process, uh, I use, you know, just a fan or a hair dryer. Um, and it's okay you know, to use hair dryer for your watercolor painting. It's not going to affect your uh, paints, and uh, it's just basically making it all faster. So now I will remove the masking paper. So you can see what it looks like underneath because I've been working on it yesterday. Maybe further. really use my gloves because everything is wet and everything is black and do you think I'm wearing black for no reason just because I look good in it no because the paint is all black and after all uh, especially if I have some sort of event to go to I'm gonna be all uh, like a Dalmatian so the apron also helps to keep your clothes tight and clean So, I um, guess it's already starting to look like something. I'll, I'll explain a little bit. This is a part of the comet, and all of that is a space, and I'm creating a, a vapor from here. So, what I'm saying, for example, over here, if this is the part of the the comet okay, and, and this is a vapor and this is really too close to be equal that means that I have to keep this uh, more clean and maybe add more uh, dark over here uh, I can show also so you see what I mean see this area I'm talking about they're way too similar, so I need to really work on, on that. But there are little uh, parts that have a lot of issues, but this is just a second day painting, and it has to develop much further. So today I'm planning on uh, continue on drawing this part of the painting and you know, work on, on the actual body of the comet as well. And yesterday I was showing, if you did not see my video, here I'll show, this is how uh, one of the finished paintings look. Look, uh, it's a Claudia Alexander Gate, a feature of the Comet 67P by the name of you know, Claudia, who unfortunately has passed away uh, just this year, so I made this painting. 
and again the the vapor the dark space and the body of the comet they have different appearances which is important in order to show like for example this is a solid part of the comet and um, it's a rock and this is uh, gas so two different approaches to the paint help to reveal different textures also uh, I have uh, something to show you yesterday I did not show it but today I'll show my uh, old painting uh, it was done on uh, 2012 I think and it's been shown a few times so uh, some of you probably have seen it uh, and the shows around New York and it's a painting my first largest painting over here it's called the arrival of a train and I been working on it um, again in, in the studio I decided to do some additions but they on uh, realized that maybe I should not change the history and keep it for my future reference this painting was inspired by an old uh, film one of the first uh, films shown for the public uh, when the train was arriving to the station but the public was not prepared they've never seen uh, films before and when they saw a train starting to approach towards them public was so scared they started to run away and um, I think that this is actually an interesting subject because it shows the influence of art on, on a human <laughs> And another task to work on today is this work that yesterday I decided that it was finished, but then I changed my mind and I'm going to do some uh, addition to it and I'll show you. So, let's see. This part of the painting is actually a top part, but I wanted to uh, make it to fade away, sort of like if the, the part of the comet has been uh, submerged into the mist. And in order to make it lighter, I'm going to be using, uh, I will be using a technique, it's called uh, glazing. For that, I need, I'm going to use a, um, a Winsor Newton watercolor. Oh, I'm sorry, not watercolor. It's, it's white gouache, actually. So squeeze some into my tray. This is a regular butcher trays. They're so good. I really like working with them. And I need water. Um, this is a hockey brush. You could have seen me describing it in one of my 30 second videos. It's an Asian style brush. It's made out of uh, very soft goat hair. It's very absorbent and very soft. So I'm mixing water with um, white gouache very lightly. I don't want to have it very opaque. It's uh, when it dries, it's going to appear transparent. Uh, so I'll add a few layers of that on this painting. I have to wait for it to dry every time. So well, right before the video, I actually has place to first coat. That's why you can see the paper buckling. But I'm going to show the idea. So let's say this area I want to add some white on.
you know, I like working on a few paintings at the same time because I'm not patient at all. So I uh, don't like waiting when one work is ready for me to proceed. So this painting will take uh, up to a half an hour to dry. And um, there are many layers that I want to do. So I just, I do this part and then I move on, work on another painting and then I come back, do another layer and on and on and on. Okay, so maybe some splashing. It's going to take some time to dry, so tomorrow I will uh, show you. Uh, this is going to be my last uh, video. Uh, again, live stream, streaming from my studio at 2 o'clock. I am waiting to see you online. And uh, you can see the development of another work as well. So please stay tuned and uh, follow me on the Facebook. I have a Facebook fan page and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already and thank you so much for watching and uh, you can visit and read about my artwork and see finished pieces on my website ekaterina-smirnova.com you have a good day and see you tomorrow